Hello everyone and welcome back to Coloring with Haley. It's finally time for my December finished pages. I know it's my favorite time of the month to see what other people finished and I know that a lot of people also kind of think this is their favorite time of the month. I did get a new background for winter. It's just kind of like a plaid background. And first let's see what my goals for this month were since I'm going to start trying to use these little planners. And you can see that I did finish all of them. I have all three check marked. I wanted to finish the Chibi Girls book. I wanted to finish the Whimsy Girls book and I wanted to color at least 15 pages. And then I just had some video ideas down here and a list of the books that I received this month. Here is what my calendar looks like for what pages I colored and you can see that I'm very into coloring at the beginning of a month and then it sort of drops off at the end of a month and that's very typical for me. I think you'll continue to see that pattern throughout the year as I color. For whatever reason, I'm just like all for it at the beginning of the month and then it just kind of slows down by the end of the month so that I'm really into it again back towards the beginning of the month. I can say though for some of these where there's kind of a few chunks of time there, any of the Chippy Girl pages and Whimsy Girl pages typically took me a night or two to finish, so that's why there's kind of a chunk in between some of those. But otherwise, I would say this is pretty accurate to how I color every month, really. Okay, so let's get started actually looking at the books. I did a one page out of 50 winter miniatures. You'll have to excuse the tabs I have there. There are things I want to color in uh, January. I figured that I was going to color a lot in this book because it does have a few Christmassy pictures, but then Camellia, of course, released her 50 Christmas miniatures book, which I actually was not expecting her to release since she did release that little Christmas elves book. So I was expecting to color a lot in the winter miniatures, but I only did this one page here of this mouse in like a little pine cone house, and he's got a bunch of different food or I guess kind of maybe they're supposed to be ornaments hanging up but I do really like how this page turned out. Wasn't sure what this was exactly so I just made it a yellow apple and I really like how my pretzel turned out. I used white paint on the salt on the pretzel. I suppose it's supposed to be big flakes of salt right but they also kind of look a little bit like sesame seeds but that wouldn't really make sense for a pretzel. What did I know they're supposed to be salt? So that's what I used on that. I think it turned out really good. And I used the white paint here on the highlights that Camilla already had on the apple. My snow was just kind of the blue-gray. I really like how that turned out. And I did the shading with the water-based markers. I'm really enjoying doing that in these books. And I actually put just a small amount of glitter on this page on the little ropes. And actually, I see right there where that rope is missing a piece of glitter. So let me just let me do that real quick and we'll let that dry. Okay, there we go. Oopsies, but that's all the glitter on this page. It's just on the little ropes of the ornament. So I'm gonna set this book over here to dry so I don't accidentally close the page on that. So next up was the 50 Christmas miniatures, which I definitely colored way more in here. I don't know if I will color in this book in January. If I do, it may be a more basic wintertime page. I don't know about you guys. I'm kind of one of those people that when a holiday is over, it is over. I'm done. Like the day after Christmas, I'm packing up the Christmas tree and putting it away. The day after Halloween, decorations are going away. The day after Easter, it's over. You know, I I'm like one of those people, it's over when it's over and I'm done with it. So... We'll see if I get more done in this book. I don't know. But I did this sloth page here for my mom who loves sloths. And when she saw this page, she said I had to do this page. So I did it. And again, I used the water-based markers to kind of do some of the outlining and shading. And I do like how it turned out. I didn't use any white paint on this page at all. But I did use a bunch of glitter on all of my little ornaments there. I used a lot of glitter in this book on the Christmas ornaments to make them shiny and sparkly. I don't know why, I just feel like that's what you have to do with ornaments. 
Next, I did this camel page. Hang on, did I color a page in front of this or is that just the shadow? It's just the shadow, okay. Because I really like this little desert Christmas page. It was kind of unusual. I'm sorry if the table is shaking. The dog's sitting beside me and itching himself and that might be shaking the table a little bit. I think this was the very first picture I did out of here as soon as I received the book because I just loved this page for some reason with the little camel and his little decorated cactus. Again, using just water-based Crayola Super Tips to do the outlining and the shading. Yeah, that's the dog in the background if you can hear him. And again, with all of the glitter on the ornaments on the little cactus tree, which just turned out really nice. I love it. And then I did this moose. I really liked all of the pages with the moose in them and I there's three or four in here and I had trouble picking out exactly which one I wanted to color but I did settle on this one. Once again I used the water-based markers to do kind of outlining and shading and I also used one of the white gel pens to add some highlights to the hooves of the moose down here and to kind of outline this highlight that she already had on the bell. I used glitter gel pens once again on the ornaments and the ornaments did have highlights on them but once you've kind of put down the glitter it's a little bit difficult to put the white gel pen around it or once you've put down the white gel pen the glitter kind of bleeds into it so I didn't end up doing any white on those highlights I just colored around them the best that I could and I actually think it turned out fine I really like this page this page is so cute how he's got the ornaments hanging off of his antlers and wasn't sure what he was carrying here I don't know if it's meant to be mistletoe or what but I did just some blue berries I think it turned out fine and then for my last page I did this little dog in like the Christmas elf shoe that says Merry Christmas and I made this little dog look like Finn when he was a puppy because he is a dog with the big pointy ears and I'm actually really happy with how this turned out I think it turned out good he does have a gray and black face with white feet. So I actually think I was able to capture how he looks really well. And I did use some white paint on the fluffy top of the shoe here to outline that. And glitter is on the ornament here and on the words Merry Christmas. And again, I used my water-based markers on this one. So happy with how that one turned out. I think I was able to make it look like Finn. All right, I'm trying to figure out where I want to put the books. Let me see if the glitter on this one is dried so over here so I can close it real quick. Yeah, all right, there we go. That makes it easier. Okay, so some non-holiday stuff here. I got cute dinosaurs as Happy Meal from Misty for Christmas. And I did this picture of the dinosaur in a present box because I was like, it's kind of... Christmassy, right? There aren't exactly any Christmas pages in here, but he could be a present under the tree. So I used my Sharpies and Bic markers in here, and I think it turned out just fine. Super cute book. Just plain colored, no paint, no uh, glitter, nothing like that. And next... I have Arwen's Dolls Space by Fox Arwen Kennedy, and I colored a page in here. I did a portrait at the back of the book of this girl named One. I also really like how this turned out. I really liked the colors that I picked for her hair. And there is glitter on here. She's, I don't know if this is supposed to be tattoos or if she's sort of like a cyborg and these are like the tech on her. I'm not exactly sure. But I did do that, whatever it is, in glitter. And I also did the frame. I really like the colors I picked for the frame, too. So next up, I've got a page from Coco Wyo's Chibi Girls. There was kind of a Christmassy holiday page in here, and I did that. Here we go. We've got this girl in, like, a little cat dress, like a wintry cat dress. And I really like how this turned out as well. Unfortunately, my marker really bled through the white paint here. This is paint, actually, rather than being gel pen. And usually it doesn't bleed through paint, but for whatever reason, this pink really did. So, 
There is white on the lace on her whole outfit here, and even on the lace up here on the little bow. And I had to use white gel pen to do the white lines on this little bow. And there is glitter on the bows that she has in her hair and on her outfit and on this present over here. And then there is some glitter on these dots in the background as well. And I do like how this picture turned out. I'm hoping to color in this book more next year. All right, let me grab another book. So next we have Color Quest Winter Wonders. And I'm a person that kind of cheats when it comes to these books. I do look at the pages in the back to kind of pick which one I'm feeling. And I wanted to make sure I did a Christmassy one because this does have a mix of just regular winter and Christmas. So you will see the Christmassy one I picked. Here we go. This one is very, very colorful. And I picked to do this one with Santa and the reindeer over the moon which I actually really like how this turned out. Again, as I always say with these books, up close and in person, they're very blocky and it almost doesn't even look like a whole picture, like the moon, you can tell all of the individual separate blocks I colored in different colors, but further away and on camera, it looks really, really good. It looks like a whole cohesive picture. And I have to say, I'm this is the second color picture I've colored in here. I'm not sure how I feel about just having a bar of colors down here without any name to them. I do have a little bit of trouble trying to match my markers to that. I think I like having names of colors more than like a very specific shade down here at the bottom. But I have to say I'm very happy with how this looks. The moon especially looks super, super good on camera. I kind of did have trouble matching um, number three especially. So mine is a little bit more green than I think it's supposed to be. But like I said, it still looks really nice. And I'll be doing another one out of here in January, but I'm gonna go for a winter themed one. I gotta reach over to get all my books because they're kind of in the corner. I did a few pages out of Easy Christmas, especially more toward the beginning of the month. And I am going to do some more in here in January because this does have a couple of just kind of winter themed one. Like I know there's a page with hot chocolate and a page with just cookies on it. So you will see this book some more in January. I did this little elf and the time I did this elf, I was a bit tired of using so much green and red as my Christmas color. So I made the elf's outfit blue and yellow and I actually really do like how that came out. For these pages, I don't really use any paint or glitter. I'll show you what an uncolored page looks like, although I'm sure you guys all know what this book looks like. You can see that it sort of has a little bit of shading and a little bit of grayscaling, and I actually follow those guidelines to do my own shading on these pictures. So here's my little elf with the big stack of presents. And of course, I knew I had to do the little donkey page because you guys know that I have two miniature donkeys. So here's my little donkey with his saddlebag full of presents and the little Christmas tree. And again, I used the kind of almost the same exact palette with the blue and the yellow because I was just getting a bit tired of the green and red, even though I did kind of use it on the present there. I am very thrilled with how this page came out. So cute. I was so excited to have a little donkey page in here. I did the cupcakes. If you remember from Halloween, I was super obsessed for some reason with all of the food pages in the Halloween book. And so I had to do a lot of the food pages out of here as well. So I did these Christmas cupcakes. We've got this one here, which is just kind of Christmas lights, and I made it like regular just vanilla cupcake with kind of a white icing. I didn't really, I, I wasn't sure what color to do with the icing. I didn't want it to be super bright and take away from the colorfulness of the lights. So yeah, I chose just to do a white icing and kind of like a gray cupcake liner. What are those called? I can't, cupcake wrapper. There we go. I love this cupcake. This cupcake is super cute and a really good idea for a cupcake to put the pretzel here, to have antlers for a little reindeer. And I made mine Rudolph with the red nose and the red wrapper. And then we've got a chocolate cupcake here with our little Christmas tree. And I really like how these turn out. These pages are so fun to color, but they make me hungry. 
And then next up, I did our little TV here, and we are watching Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer. Everyone, I think, grew up watching that little stop-motion Rudolph. It's, I think it turned 50 or 60 recently, just like very recently. It's old. It's like a very, very old TV show that's been on forever, and we've all watched it, which... I like the fact that it's so old and they've never changed anything about it. It's just been the original Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer ever since it aired. And I did kind of a mint green TV because I am in a group on Facebook for mid-century modern architecture and design and this kind of mint color is used a lot and so I wanted to replicate that on the TV. And I also think my wood grain around the edge of the TV here turned out really, really well. Super happy with this picture, and Rudolph is one of the few Christmas movies that I think I could sit down and watch, like, every single year. And then I did this little Christmas page here with the dog pulling the little kitty on the sled. And I kind of just made my dog, like, a little husky. And my cat looks like Oliver, if you've ever watched... I think that was a Disney movie, Oliver and Company. I... It kind of looks like a Disney animated movie, but it may not exactly be Disney. That's what I was kind of thinking about with this little cat here. And again, I really like how I'm able to do wood in these books. I think my sled turned out really nice. And I used nice purple for the dog's ribbon and blue for the cat's bow. I got presents again. I was trying to stray away from doing everything in that red and green. But I am happy with how this turned out. But yes, expect to see more of that book because it does have just some general winter pages in it. All right, so now we get to the two big books that I'm going to make separate videos on to show you the whole completed book, and you'll see those later in January. But for Whimsy Girls Celebrate the Holidays and Festive Occasions, we had four pages left to do this month, and I did them all. We start out with our Hanukkah page, and I'm really happy with how this turned out. I wanted to just kind of use blues and silvers, because those are the colors that I associate with Hanukkah. And I did the more difficult one, because to me there wasn't much difference in the more difficult version and the easier version. But this has a ton of glitter on it. There is a glitter on the background here, the flags, all of this party snuff back here, done up in glitter. I am, man, I am tired today. I cannot think of the words for anything. Streamers, that's what they are, aren't they? Party streamers, there we go. There is glitter on the candles. There's a little bit of glitter on the buttons on her outfit and on her jewelry. I will show you all of that. If it wants to show up there on screen a little bit, you can kind of see it. So I also used a little bit of paint on this page. Um, I did the blue on the dreidels in paint because Hannah Lynn sort of did them in the light gray liner that she uses sometimes and I was worried that marker would bleed over a little bit too much. And then I did the powdered sugar. I am not sure how to pronounce this dessert and I don't want to butcher it, but I did look it up and it starts with an S. And I did the powdered sugar on it in a white paint pen to make it look nice and yummy. And then of course I do the dots in their eyes with white paint pen. But I am very very happy with how this picture turned out. First Hanukkah page I've colored it when it was nice to have a Hanukkah page. I know a lot of people celebrate. So it was nice to have a book that actually had a Hanukkah page in it. And then we get to the little gingerbread house decorating page here. My mom said this was one of her favorite pages that I have ever done. And I am happy with this one. I did do the more difficult version because I felt like the more easy version here just left out a lot. I liked the Christmas tree in the back and everything, so I am happy with how it turned out. I really like how I did the whole family. I've got the mom and daughter and the little boy down here who is, like, trying to take candy off the house. And it turned out really, really good. I like how my house turned out as well. I used some of the Milky Pop gel pens to do the icing on the house and some of these little candies here and like the candy canes and the gingerbread men because I just think that these dry and they have like an icing look to them. I know last year I did a page in the 50 winter miniatures like this because for whatever reason I these here just look like 
delicious frosted icing when they dry. So I use those for all of my icing pages. And there is, of course, a bunch of glitter on here. It is on the mom's apron, on the little Christmas trees, it's on the girl's bow, and a lot of it is on the Christmas tree back here. I thought that these little dots all over the trees kind of reminded me of lights. And so I made them all very glittery, like the lights were on on the tree. If you can see that back there. And I actually really didn't use any paint on this page except for their eyes because I used so much of my gel pens. And next up we had the 12 Days of Christmas page and I did the easy version of this one because whew, the difficult version of this one was super, super detailed. I mean, she really has like everything for one of the every 12 days. So I went with the easier version, which still had a lot of things. You still get your hens and your doves and your partridge in the pear tree and your calling birds. So I still think you get your rings too. This you understand that it's like the five days of Christmas from looking at this because of the things in the background. It still captured that to me without being as difficult. And also, I think that if I did the more difficult version, I may not have been able to get this book done this month. And that was what I really wanted to do was to get it done. So there is white paint on her gloves here and on this furry top piece of her dress and on the partridge over here which I had to google what a partridge looked like and I kind of tried to copy exactly what they look like and there is of course glitter there is a little bit of glitter on the hearts on her dress and all of the hens have a hat with a ribbon in a corresponding glitter color and then of course I did the golden rings in glitter as well you can definitely see it on the hens for sure but I think the rings are maybe just a little bit too small to want to show up but I did do the hens like the hens that we used to have when we raised chickens. And then last but not least for this book, we have the Christmas page here with the two ladies exchanging presents. And I did some fun hair colors on them because I kind of stuck with more traditional hair colors throughout this book. And I thought, why not give them something fun for Christmas? So she's got blue hair and she's kind of got a silvery greenish gray hair color. This page also has a ton of glitter on it, by the way. It is on all of these lights in the background strung up here. And she has some on her outfit. But because of the lights, there's like a ton, ton. You'll see if you can see all of the yeah, glittery lights back there. And you can see it on her outfit, too. And there is actually a lot of gel pen on this as well. Once again, the Milky Pop gel pens, but this time I used them to decorate the presents. Hannah Lynn had a lot of designs on these presents, and once again, they were done in kind of the lighter gray liner, which I feel is really difficult to do with markers because they especially want to bleed out of that. So I came back in and decorated the presents with the gel pens. So you've got this one that has the little Christmas trees on it, this one that has dots, and I did white stripes on the top of that one, and I'm very happy with how this turned out. You know what, I may have also used gel pen to do her little earrings there. I think I might have. Yeah, very happy with how this page turned out. When I was coloring it, though, I could not figure out what this girl here was wearing. It took me a minute to figure out she's wearing a top and pants. I thought she was wearing a very weird dress because this girl's wearing a dress. It took me, definitely took me a while to figure out what was going on there. I don't know why. I just couldn't figure it out. So that is this whole book and again I'll do a completed flip through on that and you'll see that later in the month and finally last but not least our biggest one is Jade Summers Chibi Girls 2-in-1 Great Scale I have now colored all 50 pictures in this book I can't believe it this is the first time I've colored a book with this many pictures in it not let alone this many like difficult pictures I'm very excited to have finished it First up, we actually have the very last page I did in the book was this mermaid picture. I just hit my elbow on the table, if you heard that. That was like my funny bone too. This mermaid picture was a picture I saved for last because it was just my least favorite picture in the book. It doesn't actually look as busy looking at it now that I've colored it, but it looked really, really, really busy before it was colored. And so I just saved it for last. I'm not exactly a huge mermaid fan either, so I was kind of dreading this one, but I love how it turned out. 
I kind of went for really light colors on this one. So she's got like this really light ocean. I love her light tail and the pink hair. And there is a lot of paint on here. There's a little bit of glitter. Um, I did the bubbles on her outfit. I guess it could be bubbles or pearls in glitter. But I did all of these bubbles in the background in a dark blue color. Outlined them in my dark blue paint and then went back in and used white paint to do these dots inside the bubbles. I also used white paint to make the dolphin look nice and shiny and her tail because those are the things that I think would like, you know, reflect light in the water. And these little fish up here are also glittery because they were super tiny and finicky to color. And I kind of just, I don't know if they'll show up because they're tiny. I kind of gave up on trying to get them orange and green so I did orange glitter instead. And there is a little bit of the Milky Pop gel pen down here on some of the coral. Some of the coral was very fine and had really really small details. I'm gonna hold this up really close. Like this right here I did the Milky Pop in pink to do the little dots on this because I didn't think I could do that with a alcohol marker. I'd have to have a really really fine point one. Next up I had the princess page. I did this way back at the beginning of the month and I did this kind of inspired by Princess Peach because I don't know that's like one of the only princesses that I could think of and that was all that came to mind at the time. So she's Princess Peach and this is like the whole mushroom castle back there. I tried to do it in the colors of like the actual castle which is white with the red roof and everything. And I am pleased with how this turned out. It her pink dress, her blue eyes, the blonde hair. There is white paint on her gloves. I like to do the gloves in white paint. And this is like the only picture in any of the Chibi Girls pages that I've ever done that had a big highlight in the hair already done for you. So I just outlined that in white paint. Not sure why exactly this page had that and none of the rest of them do, but whatever, just the artist's choice to do that. There is a bunch of glitter though on Princess Peach herself. Her crown has glittery accents, she's wearing glittery jewelry, her belt has glittery accents. The super fine kind of decoration down here on her dress is glittery, the ends of these ribbons in her hair are glittery. You can see there the whole page, shimmery, even down at the bottom, all glittered up. And for these flowers in the background I did use just some regular gel pens. Because the flowers were kind of super tiny and the marker I used was really bleeding over into them so I thought I'd go over the top of it with the gel pen. It kind of cleans it up and hides it and you can't really tell, you know, once you do that. So, yeah, this is my Princess Speech page and this might be my favorite page that I did this month out of the book. I'm actually like really thrilled with how it turned out even though I was kind of saving this page for last. And then the page I did right after Princess Peach was this page with this girl on like the runway. I don't know, she's in like New York fashion show, Paris fashion week kind of thing, whatever, but she's on like a little runway, like a stage. And I am happy with how this turned out as well. You can see that I used a lot of white paint on her coat here. This big coat she's got that's kind of fluffy and rimmed with like this white fur. I did that all in white paint. And she does have a little bit of glitter on her outfit. Um, it was a bit difficult to pick colors that I thought looked good for her outfit. So I went with just this nice red and the brown pants and brown shoes. With a bit of red glitter on the outfit there and her jewelry is glittery too. And for the background, I, I've got to be honest, I kind of just chose some random colors out of my Spectrum Noirs that I don't think I had ever used before. And I kind of just did like a little bit of like a pastel-y background with this ice blue stage. And I'm fine with how it turned out. I think it looks pretty decent. I, The original idea for the background was just gray. You know, I was like, I don't really know what color to do it. Let's just do gray. Gray background, gray stage, gray lights. And then I decided that was maybe less, a little bit too boring, a little bit too bland. So I went with these pastel colors instead, and I'm happy that I chose to do that instead. So those are all of the books that I colored in this month. We actually have quite a different stack of books here. I kind of colored a wide variety of images. And you can see how spread out I colored those on my little calendar here. I'll actually count these out for you. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 
16, 17, 18, 19 pages, almost 20 pages this month. So a little bit slower than I was in previous months, but I kind of did take the end of the year off there to do absolutely nothing, not even color. So it kind of makes sense that I was a little bit slow there. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.